Today in Toronto, the final four becomes the final two. In the first semifinal, the Toronto Rush are on a mission to return to the championship game as the number one seed in the league and the defending AUDL champions. Expectations for the Rush are high. The New York Empire also arrive with confidence, believing that their full-strength squad has enough firepower to topple Toronto. A berth in tomorrow's title game is on the line. The Rush set to battle the Empire. Live on ESPN3. City Stadium here in Toronto. Hi, everybody. I'm Evan Lepler alongside Chicago Nemesis standout Megan Tormey. So great to have you with us for the AUDL Championship Weekend on ESPN3. In our first semifinal, Toronto, the home team, the defending champ, the juggernaut against the upstart team from the Big Apple. Megan, New York comes in with confidence despite the fact they've never beaten Toronto. Why? We've seen them play Toronto incredibly tight. In the regular season, they lost by two points, and then in the second time, by a mere three points. They didn't have their full squad on those times that they lost them. Now they're coming with all of their stars, and we've watched them get continuously better over the season, so they've got a lot going for them. But on the other side, we've seen Rush continue to grow in strength. They came out a little bit sluggish at the beginning of the season, but have gotten faster and even more athletic. It's going to be a great game. And no team was more dominant last week than Toronto, just crushing the D.C. Breeze 37-11. to 11. It was a blowout here at Varsity Stadium, but we expect today to be much closer. There's been so much anticipation for this one, in part because both Saul brothers are here, but Toronto a full-strength squad as well. Absolutely. So talking a little bit about the people on the Empire who are going to make a large impact, we, of course, look to the Dross twins. It's not really fair to single out either one of the Dross players. Um, well, let's rather start with Justin Allen, who's, uh, who's seen with the disc right now. Justin Allen, one of those players who plays with 110% intensity whenever he's on the field. Now that intensity comes into play when you talk about his uh, his throwing percentage a little bit lower for players on the on the New York Empire but that intensity really helps elevate the level of play that we see from the Empire. Whenever they have the disc, they are really absolutely incredible. Noah Saw second in the league in assists and then you look at the key guys for Toronto. You start with Mark Lloyd who very well could be the MVP in this league. Couple guys from the Midwest and the West have campaigns for that as well. But the first semifinal here in Toronto is underway. Justin Allen pulling for the Empire in the white to the rush, the home team in the red. Now the rush are no longer undefeated, losing a few weeks back to Montreal, but they bounce back with wins over Philadelphia and wins against DC in the first round of the playoffs. We had a chance to talk with both coaches of the Rush about that loss to Montreal. It sounded like the Rush were simply having an off game while the Montreal Royale were playing one of their best games. So it's good to know that a team like Toronto can have a down game, but this first point looks like they're back on target. Even with a 24 second shot clock, they still would have scored as Cam Harris <laughs> hauls it in despite the superior layout bid from Ben Ivers getting horizontal. You know, New York prides itself on being a defensive team, and yet this rush offense as good as anybody in the league. Well, someone like Cam Harris on the line, there really isn't anything that he can't do. He's 6'2", a formidable force on offense or defense. Very fast, very athletic, despite his, his tall size. It's no surprise he can outrun just about anyone on the Empire. Like New York talked about some new wrinkles that we're gonna throw at Toronto today. The wind is a little bit of a factor. There were forecasts for storms. It's turned into a beautiful Saturday here in Ontario. 
Isaac Saul fouled on the mark. Isaac Saul earlier this summer was playing exclusively for the New York Rumble. Now he's joined the Empire as Billy Katz shoots one deep and right on target into the hands of Taylor Brooks, and we're tied. Yeah, Once Taylor again, it took less than 24 seconds. This reminds me of the game we watched just last weekend, the Radicals against the, the Cats. Both teams came out playing their game incredibly chilly. It was offense versus offense for a while until nerves started to fluster one of the teams. I have a suspicion that perhaps that's going to happen today as well. Isaac Saul wearing number 51, the younger brother of Noah Saul. Officials for today's game, John Thibodeau, Josh Cooper, Phil Boyer, and Ben Godin. And this is up line, Billy Katz, who probably doesn't get talked about enough, is one of the key handlers to the Empire's success. You're right, he's really one of those players that can just fill the gaps in any offensive need. He's always there to head up, set up the hockey assist for the Empire. Let's look at this defense that New York is showing here. A lot of poaching away from cutters. Justin Allen defending underneath. This is Lloyd with the disc. Up line to Yearwood, he's wide open. Adrian Yearwood shoots to the back of the end zone. Right on the money. Carl Loiseau for the score. 2-1 Toronto. Talking with Coach Gibbons before the game, he said that the Empire have four main defensive looks that they create permutations off of to try and fluster teams like the Rush, who are so chilly offensively. Now, you notice that point, it took them maybe a few extra looks, but not that much longer to score that point. The first point took 21 seconds. The second point took 20 seconds. That point, by far the longest of the match, it took 28. <laughs> It's like practically an eternity. Everything downwind so far, everything on serve. Gord Harrison to pull for the rush. Now these two teams met in the semifinals last year as well. And you know, we asked both coaches how they felt this year compared to last year. I think everybody expects this one to be much closer, and New York played pretty tough last year in the semis. They played great last year. They came out looking unlike anything we had seen throughout the season in 2013. This year, they made a much more impactful statement at the beginning of the year. We are not a team to be discounted. Matt Bode was bumped by Jonathan Martin, but he hauls it in. Bigger part, and that was Noah Saul. Saul and Bode, two of the North Carolina additions on the New York team this year, coached by Tom Gibbons. Toronto led by Evan Phillips. They call him Dime. Scott Shooter Hasty, his assistant. Now this is Bode. And he turfed it. The first turnover. Vasiliev picks up. And it's turned right back. Cats the interception and then the quick giveaway. And this is typical. I mean, this is what you see. When we were standing down on the field earlier today, noticed a definite wind. It seems to be elevating every throw that goes up. We noticed some really long and lofty, lofty puts from both teams. Basically, side stack here for Toronto. Three on the left, two sort of in the middle. Bode, a big layout, D into Martin, and contact called on Bode. Ten yard penalty. Martin and Bode both throwing their bodies around. Anatoly Vasiliev shooting up line near the sideline, it's defended. This is Noah Saul. He met Tom Gibbons playing Fool's Fest, one of the more relaxing tournaments, <laughs> and that's where the relationship began, and Gibbons pursued Noah to come up from North Carolina. 
He had an unbelievable season. Might have led the league in assists if he had played in every game. And here's a chance for an assist. The Empire find the end zone. It's Lionel Winninger from Noah Saul. Both teams looking so much more comfortable throwing from right to left. Uh, a few throws ago, we saw Toli Vasiliev throw, like I mentioned earlier, just a really lofty backhand. He's one of those handlers you expect to be able to work up when be able to expect to be able to work really well on the break side, still looking like he's having just a touch of trouble. And this last point, four total turnovers to a side, and it took 92 seconds for the goal. We were chatting with Tom Gibbons before the game, and he basically said, look, we don't have a ton of size in firepower. We don't have those guys that if we fall behind, they're going to pull us back into the game single-handed. But we believe in our system, we believe in our defense, and we believe that if we play well, we will keep it close with anybody. Thompson McKnight, the primary center handler for Toronto. Now this is Lloyd underneath. Looking for Lloyd. Just too far in front of the layout. That disc took a slight nosedive towards the end there. Lloyd did everything he could to save it. Isaiah Bryant picks up. Centers for Jesse Lieberman. Childers back to the middle. Looks like the Empire are really struggling to generate opportunities downfield. That and the rush are holding them very tightly. This is the D-line of New York trying to play offense. Ryan Drost with his first touch. Ahead for Bryant. Keep in mind they're going up wind and that's turned over. It's hard to tell from the booth, but when we were walking over here a couple hours ago, the wind was substantial and we can see the trees in the distance are blowing pretty good. The winner of this game gets the winner of San Jose and Madison. And Lloyd, his deep shot over the head of Cam Harris. It's amazing how just one mistake can get a team out of sync. Absolutely. And to be perfectly honest, I really would expect that a little bit more from the Empire. They're a younger team. They, they're not nearly as seasoned as individual players on the rush in high pressure situations like this. Um, but couple that with some strong wind, both teams can look a little ruffled. Traveling violation called against the Empire. Jesse Lieberman, the victim. He wanted a receiver's travel, which would have been a 10-yard penalty, but New York keeps the disc instead. It's a turnover. McKnight gives up nine yards. Yearwood shoots over the top, looking for Armitage. He's got him. We're still on serve, 3-2 Toronto. And that point took more than two minutes. Yeah, that's really what happens when you start to get nervous or start playing a little bit out of your element. As you talked earlier, it's so crucial for the Empire to, to play within the system that they all bought into at the very beginning, at the very beginning of the season. Great hammer from Yearwood, using the wind. Noticing both the intended receiver, Armitage, getting open and using the wind to his advantage. Here on AUDL Championship Weekend, we want to hear from you. 
respond with the hashtag AUDL Final Four. And the question is simple. Who will win and why? Let us know what you think via Twitter with the hashtag AUDL Final Four. Alongside Megan Tormey, Meagles triple zero. I'm Evan Leffler. We wish Chuck Kindred could be here with us. Unfortunately for Chuck, something came up at the last minute. He was unable to be here. Chuck, we missed you, buddy. You're here in spirit. And, uh, that's a big drop by New York. Butterfingers from Noah Saul. Looking for the first break. Not ruled in yet, but now Toronto leads by two. Heckin' of athletic maneuver from Jonathan Martin to try to find the end zone, but he needed one more flip. You know, Jonathan Martin had a great game against DC when they won 37-11. So I know that everyone on the, on the rush line were looking for great things from Martin today. Could have been a contact foul to send to the disc. They didn't need any help. So Vasiliev, one of the best defensive handler defenders in the country, or in the world, you might say. Vasiliev, born in Russia, has competed internationally both for Russia and for Canada. Couple New York handlers juggle the disc. Noah Saul takes a tumble, but hangs on as Vasiliev trails. A little two-man offense with Saul and Katz. It's creating space downfield for those two to go to work, and they've gained 45 yards. Saul flicks it to wow. the end zone. Up win, no problem. That was a really exciting series of throws between Empire handlers. I was really impressed with how n how narrow of margins they were working through and how quickly they were getting those throws off. Well, defending, it was Nima Mostagimi and Vasiliev. And I think the, the lesson here is that great offense beats great defense. Well, and it's so funny, you were mentioning just at the beginning of the point, what an amazing defensive handler Vasiliev is. And they, they made short work of his mark. This is a kid who's a burgeoning star as well. Justin Allen in the top three at the Cal in the Callahan Award this year in USAU College Ultimate, despite the fact that he played at Appalachian State, a school that has never gotten a ton of national recognition, speaks to the kind of young man that he is and just limitless potential. He loves to throw his body around. He's defending here. This is Cam Harris, a guy who's been a great player for a long time in the Canadian scene. McKnight looking deep for Harris, chasing from behind Ben Ivers. Harris in the end zone. He didn't realize he had five more yards to work with. <laughs> Wouldn't have been, would have been an amazing catch if he was at the end of the end zone, but he still had plenty of space. One more step, he catches it in the blue, but behind the Porterfield back end zone line. Here on this Canadian-sized football field. It was kind of hard to see. He wasn't in the frame for very long, but Cam Harris just broke away from Ben Ivers in two strides. And the reason the end zone is where it is, the Canadian football field, 110 yards, so midfield is not the 50, as you notice, it's the 55. There are two 50-yard lines here where the University of Toronto football team plays for a long time. The Toronto Argonauts of the CFL played here. There have been big football and soccer games. The Grey Cup has been held here in the past. The Super Bowl, the CFL, 
Here's a deep shot, saw to Bode, and up high, Matt Bode makes the play. One more to the end zone for Matt Stevens. Here's a nice taste of explosiveness from the New York Empire. Martin played the disc well. I think Bo just had maybe an inch over Martin. Proved to be just enough that throw. What do you notice here about Matt Bode sizing up this disc? Well, you notice the entire time he was working to maintain position. He had to figure that Martin was in hot pursuit. So we see him square up the body to where the disc is coming, but also where he assumes Martin is coming so that his shoulder keeps Martin from making a play. Martin was mighty close to that D, but he comes up empty. The rush down by one, pulling. Ho-hum, 90-yard flick pull from <laughs> Justin Allen. Just another day in the life. Contact on the mark. It was funny, earlier this year I was you know, chatting with Ryan Dross, and you talk about how guys started playing ultimate. You know, most guys, the first time they throw a flick, it's an absolute disaster. I think the first time that Ryan Dross played, he tried to throw a flick in the, in the course of the game, and it just landed at his feet. And someone basically said, you could call a foul on that. And he said, no, I just, I just threw it. <laughs> Nobody hit me. But it's a beautiful throw once you learn to perfect it. More and more you see young people with just these dynamite flick hucks. I certainly you know, never had thrown a flick, never had seen anybody throw a flick until I went to college. This is Harris underneath. The rush trying to stay up one break. Lloyd, Armita Armitage couldn't get the cut. Back to the middle of the field, swinging it perfectly. Rush did a really nice job of moving the disc off the sideline into the open space. And it just so happens that there were multiple rush players cutting into that space. That's why we noticed just short, easy passes that were pretty much uncontested. Sash and Reyna, 31-year-old cutter from Thornhill, Ontario, calls in this score. One of the things you notice when you watch Toronto, regardless of whether somebody's a handler or a cutter, they all just have beautiful throws. They float when they need to float. They're, they're zipping in there when they need to be more precise. A great fundamentally sound ultimate team. There are so so many incredibly well-rounded players. I think a lot of it has to do with the number of rush players who started playing in their high school years. They look so natural throwing forehands and backhands, playing at any part in the field. You're absolutely right. There are some designated positions that players have, but they really could fill in just about anywhere. Noah Saul's flick canceled immediately by Anatoly Vasiliev. We'll put that one in the Vasily of highlight column as opposed to the possession before. <laughs> but as a defender in a game where there's so much offensive talent, you get one or two Ds, you put your team in a position to win, and the rush with their second break. Up line, it's Trevor Henry who hauls it in from Jeff Lindquist. You know, that's a great point, Evan, about putting your position in a team to win, uh, putting your team in a position to win. And then when you have um, the talent level that the Rush have, they have such a high conversion rate defensively. That's really how we watch them over a game, just slowly and consistently pull away from the other team. Vasiliev for Lindquist, and then the mark doesn't get set quickly enough. And one of the big things that Tom Gibbons talked about was we need to suppress their handlers. We need to give our cutting defenders a chance to get settled in. And you know, he said he's not a big fan of the cross sport comparison, but in a sense, it's like creating a pass rush to get some pressure on the quarterback to get him out of his comfort zone and give your secondary a chance to get settled. And now as 
sort of a dangerous sequence here for New York as they turn it over again early in the possession. Vasiliev, and now forward, looking for the break for Jonathan Martin. He's in. Vasiliev's break throws are just absolutely brutal. Yes. Jimmy Jarrett and Marin with a big lefty flick. And hauled in by Martin and the rush, their largest lead yet. Maybe we can see a couple throws ago where Vasiliev started this off. There are a number of times where he does this for the D-line. He gets an easy break, and then it's pretty much the rush just playing catch with themselves. Great angle, both of the camera shot and of this throw, just around the defender. He had three, four yards, and that was all he needed. Oh, and Martin shows it to Bode. That didn't look entirely friendly. Well, they say familiarity breeds contempt, <laughs> and this is not the first time these two teams have come across each other. We, we've seen how physical they've been. I think the referees have done a pretty good job so far, you know, calling some contact. Now this is Katz looking for Bode. Up high, he missed time the jump. Everybody in the league talks about how Toronto capitalizes on your mistakes. Henry on the doorstep once again. Back for Harrison. Timeout called by the rush. Evan Phillips on the sideline wants to talk it over. One minute remaining here in the first quarter at Varsity Stadium. A great crowd on hand. Championship weekend as we decide the third ever AUDL champion, the rush, the defending champs, looking worthy again as they call timeout on the goal line. Hey, boss. Who are you? Charles Barkley. Sorry, with all this growth, I can't remember every new hire. You hired me for IT? I hope you win that trophy over there. What have you done for me lately? I worked with CDW and NetApp to set up a FlexPod data center platform. Sounds like a winner. Keep it up, Barkley. Barkley. The Rush looking to take a five-point lead here in the first quarter. Toronto's disc. The offensive line comes in. Mark Lloyd standing all by himself in the front left corner of the end zone. Thompson McKnight to pick up the disc. Adrian Yearwood, the other Rush handler nearby. There's Lloyd to the left. Ryan Dross defending Lloyd. Lloyd slipped underneath. Up line for Yearwood, he's got it. There are just so many weapons. You can't solely focus on a guy like Lloyd, but he's a guy who merits your complete and total focus. And oftentimes when you have a player like that on the field, it can really pull the defense off, opening up score opportunities for other players on the field. Sensing that Bryant was doing a nice job cutting off the dump. He just stormed up the line and it's an easy throw from Isaiah Masek Kelly. Yearwood still had to reach out ahead of himself to catch that disc. He knew Bryant was in very hot pursuit. Bryant, of course, the defensive captain for the New York Empire. Certainly, if he's on your left shoulder, you better respect that. Masek Kelly, another guy who's played with the Canadian national team, the U23 team. Don't want to overstate the importance of this possession. But New York needs to score here, right? They absolutely do. We have seen them ebb and flow within games before. But when they get down, it can be okay. hard for them to pull out of that and go back into playing their own game. Trevor Henry with a layout D for the rush. Henry. 
20 seconds for Lindquist. Taking it all here, defended by Bode. 10 seconds for New York. Five seconds. Katz is gonna need to take a shot. He gets it off. Right on the money! Taylor Brooks in the end zone at the buzzer for the New York Empire. That was a vital point, Evan, both for the score, but also for the morale of the Empire. Well, Henry started this point with a big layout D, just beating the man underneath. And then Lindquist threw it away. Katz caught this with about three seconds left. He just needed a launch and got it barely over the fingertips of Lindquist. After one quarter, it's the rush nine and the Empire five. One down, three to go here in the first semifinal in the 2014 AUDL playoffs on ESPN3. Don't worry, I'll call you when I get there. Mom's not gonna believe it. Send her a picture. Are you seeing this? Wow. Sleep so we could drill. I miss anniversary and Father's Day. Mother's Day. Tremendous crowd on hand here in Toronto. The rush leading by five, uh, by four, nine five after the Empire scored that final second goal to end the first quarter. This is the 2014 AUDL Championship Weekend presented by CDW. And here in the booth, I'm Evan Leppler with Megan Tormey, and very pleased to have a very special guest, a member of the Chicago Wildfire, one of the great ambassadors for the sport of ultimate. Everybody knows Brody Smith. Brody, welcome to Canada. What's happening, guys? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Your uh, your quick hit thoughts on that first quarter. Well, to be honest with you, I think New York right now, when we played them last week, they did a great job of uh, converting on every single turnover we had. And it just looks like their defense right now is not able to do that. And they've had a couple big mistakes on offense, so we'll see if they can clean it up. Like, that's one of them right there. Matt Stevens in and out of his hands. And you saw the Empire last week, your first glimpse of them in person in that you know, cross-divisional matchup. What, what were your expectations going into that game, and, and how did New York look to you? Yeah, I mean, we watched some of their game film, and obviously they have some big players like Justin Allen, Noah Saul as well. But um, playing the game, we really noticed that they actually have a, a pretty deep roster, and they were really able to kind of use their legs to, uh, to really put a lot of pressure on our offense throughout the entire game. Had a clock issue, that's why we're stopped. Gives the Rush fans a chance to get everybody into this game. You know, when, when you first heard of Professional Ultimate a few years ago, I mean, what were your hopes for what this would turn into? I mean, I think really it's great to play, but I think it gives a chance to really kind of get, get it out there for the younger younger athletes to look at and, uh, you know, motivate younger players to see people and, and try to, you know, be them and, and, and train hard and stuff. So I think it's doing that. There's a lot of young, young ultimate players in the crowd tonight, and so it's awesome to see. Toronto turns it over. A lot of loft under this one. Gord Harrison defending, but it's handled by New York's Matt Stevens in the end zone. So that's two in a row for New York after they fell behind by five. 9-6 the score. You came into the AUDL a couple years ago with Indianapolis, so spent the last couple of years with Chicago. As a player, what has the experience been like for you? Oh, it's been great. I think, I think the league's awesome to play in. I think having fans that are cheering you on is great, and 
I really do like the one game format. Um, I think it allows the players to go out and play the hardest uh, they can. And I mean, I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great thing for the sport and uh, I think it's just going to continue to grow. New York with a big break to begin the second quarter. You know, everybody knows about your trick shot videos <laughs> and you've traveled all around the world. Yeah. For, for people who don't know the beginning of your background story, yeah. when did you start playing Ultimate? Uh, I started playing my freshman year at University of Florida 2006. That's when I really kind of just got. So you weren't one of the prodigies who started playing 11 years old? No, I was. I was. I, I played around when I was in high school, but that was terrible. It wasn't until I got to Florida that I really saw some great players. Great Deep hockey shot there. looking for Yearwood. He's about five yards shy of the goal line. He makes up those five yards by running it. Flips it high to Lloyd, but Mark Lloyd up high to haul it in for the rush. Toronto's got a lot of stars on this offense. They're looking, they're looking good this game. Man, if we can see that again, it was really interesting to watch how Lloyd ran into the end zone, ran right in front of his potential defender, Ryan Dross, just took possession in a couple of, just a couple of steps, opened up that possibility. That's actually a good move there. A lot of, a lot, a lot of people when they, when they're kind of trailing a play, they try to get really far away from the frisbee. And if you see this, he gets real close. And it allows him to either have that open look right here for Yearwood, or if the guy, if his defender overplays it, he can just stop, and the guy's going to blow right by him. So you don't really want to get that much space if you're the first first offensive player down. He runs right at the defender. Yeah, you want to get right in front, you know, five five feet or so right there, so he can make a quick movement if he if he needs to. I'm sure, Yearwood didn't mean to put quite that much loft on the throw. Four-score lead for the rush. We're just one minute into the second quarter, and New York gives it away again. Can you give us a quick glimpse into your travel schedule? And just like the last <laughs> few weeks, all the cities that you've been to? Uh, if I can remember. Uh, I was down in Rio for the World Cup for a little bit, and then I... Uh, Not too shabby. That was fun, and then I flew back to Chicago for a little bit, and then off to L.A., in here and then I'll be headed back out to LA on Sunday night. Toronto, shy of the goal line. This is Jonathan Martin. Phil Watanabe centers for Martin. Backhand to Vasilia. Too good. Well, the winner of this game gets the winner of the second semifinal, which is scheduled to start at 7 o'clock Eastern here at Varsity Stadium. The San Jose Spiders out of the West, the Madison Radicals out of the Midwest. You know a lot of guys on yeah. both of those teams. What are your thoughts on how those two teams match up? I think the game's going to be super interesting because watching a lot of San Jose games this year, their offense is just, I mean, they put up huge points. And uh, watching Madison's games, their defense has really has really made a lot of teams struggle and so it's gonna be really interesting to see you know what what you know what wins out is it the Madison defense or is it the uh, San Jose offense from what you've seen the past few years what's the key to handling the Madison defense what if any advice did you give to your old buddy Kurt Gibson <laughs> uh, to be honest I think the big I mean if it's windy that defense is really, really good. Um, if it's not windy, there's a lot of holes, and you just have to be aggressive with it and, and make those shots. Um, but if it's windy like it is today, I mean, that's going to be a really hard defense to, to go up against. Aggressive marks here from Toronto. That was one of Evan Phillips's keys. The coach of the rush said we need to mark habitually, intense every time. Probably one of the more underappreciated skills in ultimate. Yeah, the mark, the mark is huge. A lot of people take, take a break when they get on the mark, and that's really when you want to dig in and, and put a lot of effort in and hold the mark. Especially on the AUDL field, which is wider than the club field. Yeah, I think, I think New York, that's something that their defense can do a little bit better. If you watch in the first, half, first quarter, Toronto was able to break the mark consistently and um, really get a lot of scores there. Matt Bode shot to the end zone, knocked down by the laying out Harrison. Once again, danger territory here for the Empire. Oof. Right through the hands of Eamon Pinto. Yeah, I think I think New York needs to get the the, the disc into uh, Noah's hands more. That was his brother there trying to hit him with the break. 
I think Noah needs to just start kind of inserting himself a little bit because he's doing a great job of throwing, and it looks like New York's having a lot of issues there. So he, he needs to start getting the disc more. Uncharacteristic first throw turnover leads to this. He's not in the end zone yet, but right on the doorstep, Liam Bradford to Ricky Zetto. Ricky Zito. And right now, Toronto doubling up New York 12-6. The Rush are looking so comfortable on, on D. We saw when Ford Harrison got that D on Justin Allen, he was positioned well to take the break or the inside. Started out with a D here from Harrison. Yeah, if you can mute the effort of a player like, like Justin Allen, you do great things for your team. Timeout called by the Empire, 12-6. Toronto leads back with Brody Smith in a moment. Admit it, we've outgrown our office space. What? We're meeting in an elevator. Let's talk to CDW's Mobility Solutions team. They'll configure the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon with the Intel Core i7 processors for our network. It's super light, so we can work from anywhere. I like it. Excuse me, gentlemen. We've got this room booked. Thank you. That's a live shot from an overhead drone here at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Expecting to have multiple drones above the field during the championship game tomorrow. That's a pretty good shot. Drone, drone view is awesome. I think, I think it's super epic. <laughs> Back to Varsity Stadium, Evan Lepler with Megan Tormey and our special guest, Brody Smith. I, I've always wanted to ask you this. Do you have your all-time favorite trick shot that you've done? It's got to be the bat shot. Even though I didn't really throw it, I hit it with a baseball bat, I think. I think that was definitely my, my favorite because I, I honestly have never I never thought it was possible to do that. So. Where where did that one go down? Uh, that was down in uh, Alabama, of all places. If it was like at Fenway Park, it would have been a little, a little better. Uh, we'll see one day, maybe. From the top of the green monster, maybe. Man. New York looking out of sorts. Vasiliev collects off the turn. Wide open, Nima Mostagimi. Vasiliev, air bounce. Lindquist breaks the mark. Toronto not in. Fancy. It worked. Massa Kelly gets up high and brings it down. I have to think you as a player feel totally dominant in a game when you make decisions like that, when the stall count is low. You have to feel pretty confident about where your team is and how you're playing. Yeah, when all, when all you know, cylinders are clicking right now, which is what's happening right now, I mean, you, you don't really think that much. Right now you can see New York having a lot of turnovers that are just mental errors. Uh, that first turnover there was just an easy swing pass that you should complete every time. And when things aren't going for you, you start thinking about stuff and you don't let it just you know, the Frisbee just fly, and Toronto's doing that right now, and everything's working. So to put it as simple as you can, the easy things are not working for New York, and Toronto's making the hard plays look easy. Yeah, New York definitely needs some sort of some sort of thing to, to fire them up right now, because you can tell their, their, their heads are down a little bit here. Harrison pulls to the rush offense. Now I know your life is ultimate, and you're getting ready to head to Italy. Yeah, I am really excited uh, about that. I got my leg is finally feeling decent. Just got to get the cardio up a little bit, but uh, really excited to play with my boys over on Bravo. When is your uh, flight to Lecco? Uh, I believe it's Wednesday next week, if, I, if I'm correct on that. <laughs> World's coming up beginning next weekend. This is Allen to the end zone, finding Winninger for his second score. Makes it 13-7. Can you give us some of the behind the scenes on what brought you to, to Bravo? 
it's interesting. There's, I mean, there's a couple teams that I was looking at. Um, I, I think Bravo, after watching them the last couple years, it, it's the style of play that they have is something that's very appealing to me. Um, obviously, Kurt going over there was also a big a draw for me. And uh, I don't know, there's a good group of guys, and um, you know, it's been fun playing with them and getting to know them more. Would you, would you classify Kurt in, in a group of people that are one of your ultimate role models, the people that helped teach you this game? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if it wasn't, I mean, Kurt and Tim Garrett were the two guys when I first started that impacted my playing so much and still do. Um, watching those guys compete, I mean, there's nothing like it. New York Bulls for number 27, the final winner, assistant by number one, Justin. Two pretty good teachers, I'd say, Tim Garrett and Kurt Gibson. Garrett won national title with double wide of course in addition to being the Callahan winner at University of Florida in 2006 it's your freshman year it's freshman year yeah book ending your career with titles right it was a good way it was a good way to go out Lasso around midfield to Yearwood Reyna looking for Armitage Incomplete. Now this is where New York did a great job playing against us last week. They converted almost every single time we turned it over. Today, not so much. So it'll be interesting to see how they do here. It starts with just basic offense, but Mike Drost slipped. And McKnight to the end zone for Cam Harris and the rush score. The rush are so quick to get back on O after D. It's really not giving the Empire enough time to set up, which is surprising from a team that's known for their defense. Fourteen seven, Toronto. And there's still a long way to go in this game. But it, I mean, if you're New York. There's only so much of a deficit that you could think about overcoming against this Toronto team. They're, they're in a tough spot, too, because, I mean, one of my least favorite things that people say on the sideline is, all we have to do is play better. But, I mean, that's, that's kind of what New York has to do. They just have to play better. They need to make better throws. They need to catch the disc when it's thrown to them. And, and it's sometimes tough because it's not like an easy strategy. Okay, guys, let's force flick and set back in. It's... All right, let's just do the simple fundamental things correctly. You can spend all week long talking about the X's and O's and the chess match, and we have this new defense that's going to flummox them, but if you don't do the simple things, the game's over before it starts. And another turnover, a great layout D from the rush. Running to the near sideline, that was Jared Marin. Yeah, I mean, that's... In that's the case point right there. That throw should never have gone up. He was never open when that throw happened. And, you know, New York just needs to be a little more simple with the disc. Linquist to Vasiliev. I think that's interesting what you're saying, Brody, about how that can be a difficult critique to take, simply play better. I do have to say I, I have a lot of faith in Tom Gibbons' ability to rein the Empire in mentally. There have been a number of times this year where he has pushed his team through a lull in the game by saying some choice words. And he typically phrases things like play a little bit better in constructive terms, like we need to give 30% more or we need to do X. Kind of taking that, that, that simple task of playing better and putting it in quantifiable, quantifiable measures. There's also got to be a mental hurdle because New York has never beaten Toronto. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, it's it definitely close. tough. Yeah. But, I mean, I think when it comes down to it, like, that stuff doesn't really play into, play into the playoffs too much. You come in, you think you have a good chance of winning. But I think right now it's, it's definitely playing into their minds of whether or not they can actually beat this team. And a mistake by Justin Allen. The disc right through his hands and intercepted. And Vasiliev was just drilled from behind by Bode. Good spirit after the foul, but a 10-yard penalty will give Toronto an even shorter trip to the end zone. This is looking way too easy for the defending champions. Of 
But with that said, it's also been impressive how efficient they've been. I mean, Toronto looks really, really good right now. Uh, their offense is super crisp. They're, and like I said, they're able to break the mark almost every single time they have the disc. By doing that, just allowing, allowing easy, easy goals. I totally agree. Earlier this game, I didn't think it was necessarily what the Empire was doing wrong, but rather what the Rush were doing really well. Now I think that started to eat away at the confidence of the Empire, and they're making sillier mistakes. We're chatting with Brody Smith. Brody Smith 21 on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all the Vine and Snapchat uh, and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but I figure you're on the verge of inventing a new means of social <laughs> media. I, I hope not. There's already way too much. I wish there was only like one or two things. It's too much to keep track of sometimes. Well, you seem to have a mastery of it all. It's all, it's all an illusion. Nearly a turnover. And wow. wow. New York wow. is walking on the edge of a cliff right now. <laughs> no, no one needs to get the disc in his hand. Right here, this is the guy that really needs to make some plays for them, get him back in the game, settled in a little bit. Saul to Bode, just shy of midfield, and cross it to Allen. Avoiding Leia D from Pinto. This is Saul. Wow. Ooh. You don't see Matt Bode make that drop very often. I mean, that's that's tough is when you're, I mean, he just had a drop. Justin, one of their best players, just had a drop last point. When, you, when your best players aren't playing well, it's really, really tough to uh, stay in a game against a team like the Rush. And a stall was called on Loiseau. It'll be New York's disc. Saul sending it deep. Wants Brooks. He can't find him. One thing I always wanted to ask you before we let you go, you, you post so many great YouTube videos. That moment you hit post or, or submit, or, and it's officially up there, what, what's like the 30 seconds after that like for you? I mean, it used to be, I used to be really, I used to be really worried with like views and how many likes and all that stuff. And now, I mean, I'm having such a blast doing what I do that it's just, you know, I post it and it's, it's fun to read the comments initially and seeing what people think of the video. But I mean, you always get a little nervous when you post something out there for everyone to see, you know, what people are gonna think and whatnot, but it's gotten easier over the years. Again, not to the intended target, but Katz makes the play. What Justin Allen with a big layout just to keep possession alive and then it only lasts so long. Pinto for Harris, right on target. I really think at this, point, at this point, the Empire need to start looking for longer throws. They have got to stretch the field. The Rush have their number on those unders. How many Ds have they gotten just run through supposedly easy passes up the line from the, from the Empire? Yeah, halftime cannot come soon enough for the uh, Empire right now. They need, to, they need to kind of reset a little bit and try to, try to just get, again, back to the fundamentals. That was a poach D right there. That, that passion never ever gotten thrown, so. It's a great catch, though, there. Well, the Empire scored the final point of the first quarter and the first point of the second quarter. And since then, the Rush have scored eight of the last nine points. And another thing here, I think, you know, the Empire... Their O line is probably getting pretty tired. Yeah, I was just gonna say that when you when you get broken a lot on this big field already, I mean, there's a lot more running, a lot more uh, a lot more energy that has to go into the offense, and having to play that many points back to back, it's definitely gonna definitely gonna wear on them. Stevens adjusts his body to handle the hammer. You can see on this line, you have a lot of defensive players actually playing offense for New York to get. Some of the offensive players a little rest here. Bryant was bumped. Oh, 
Sam Taylor back for Bryant. You gotta give some credit to the rush defense. Nothing is easy even near the end zone. Finally a crease and a New York score. A much needed New York Empire trip to the end zone. Makes it 17 to eight with just about two minutes to go in the second quarter. It's a nice step around break mark throw there to make the easy score. Brody Smith, before we let you go, do you have a message for ultimate fans around the world who are watching about where this sport is going in your eyes? I mean, obviously, that's a question that's get asked a lot. You know, Olympics, all these things people want to know. To me, I don't think it really matters that much. I mean, I would love to see the sport get, get bigger and have more people playing, but I think it's such an amazing sport that if you fall in love with it and you love to play it, then that's the important thing. So, you know. Maybe if you have a friend or two, you know, invite, invite them out to a game and see what happens. Teach them how to throw a flick. Teach them how to throw. Maybe not the first day. That's a good way of getting people really frustrated. <laughs> Start with the back end, I would say. As Toronto brings in the disc, know you have a lot of other stuff going on this weekend. We'll let you go. Hopefully, we'll you'll chat with you uh, during the finals tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me, guys. Brody Smith, thank you so much. Deep shot to the end zone for the Toronto Rush. Cam Harris handles the deflected disc and scores. Ben Ivers did all he could. It's amazing quick reaction speed from Cam Harris on that catch there. Kind of looked lackadaisical as he made that save too. Like, no big deal. I got it. It is amazing how comfortable Toronto has looked. And yes, they're at home. And yes, they've won every game they've ever played except one. But we still, we expected New York to have more resistance. And well, they're getting the breaks. Does Mark Loy get the assist or does Ben Ivers get the assist? <laughs> it's great concentration, isn't it? Yeah. This is Ryan Drost, identical twin of Mike Drost. Ryan's got longer hair and might be a half inch taller. Cats to the end zone, and New York finds Izzy Bryant. All season long, Megan, Toronto has not had an O-line and a D-line. It's been two 10-person pods among the 20-person active roster. And yeah, one line is probably better offensively and the other is probably better defensively. But they've got a wide array of talent on each. It'll be interesting to see, do they you know, keep their studs like Lloyd and Harris and you know, McKnight on the O-line or do they just keep having them play every other point? At some point in the second half, if they're up by double digits, do they try to perhaps conserve some legs because there's less than 24 hours of recovery time for the biggest game of their lives tomorrow. That's very true, but you gotta think that's a nice problem to have. So much talent, you're not exactly sure where to configure all of your best players. Not a bad position to be in. McKnight. Lloyd. Again for McKnight. Loiseau. McKnight. Lloyd. Under a minute to go in this first half. The rush back up by 10.
Toronto has already scored 10 times here in the second quarter. Mark Lloyd started playing ultimate in fifth grade in an intramural league at lunchtime in Winnipeg. Also played hockey growing up. The reason he stuck with ultimate is because everybody started growing, but I didn't. He was 5'4", 110 pounds in ninth and 10th grade. Stuck with ultimate, became short and quick, and then he grew. And he's certainly not a giant, but he stands six foot two. 180 pounds, and obviously a guy who can hold his own in the air. Deep shot over the hands of Bemis. Elliot Bemis could not haul it in for the Empire. Clock ticking under 30 seconds in the first half. Contact on the mark. Contact on New York. More contact. The clock is ticking. Contact on New York. Rush wanted the clock to be reset. And that'll do it for the end of the first half. Mike Jones wanted the clock to stop on that foul in the final seconds. Instead, the clock expires, but a tremendous first half for the Toronto Rush, regardless. New York just a little bit off, and Toronto right on the money throughout this first half. A meaningless turnover as the second quarter clock expired. So after a 9-5 win in the first quarter, Toronto outscores New York 10-4 in the second. Toronto's only loss came to Montreal. They won the championship last year. They're one half away from being back in the championship game this year, and Megan Tormey is down on the field with Cameron Harris. Defensively, that's working so well. Um, we noticed a lot of the uh, the scouting watching their games beforehand. They really like to go attack deep and then cut back under the open side, so we talked about really clamping out on that uh, and doing a good job using her body to deny them that under. And when you are on offense after you get the D, you guys are looking the most comfortable I think we have ever seen you look. Is there something that you guys changed in practice? What's working so well for you? Um, I can't put a word to it. I know we've been we've been preaching patience all season. I don't know what's changed lately. I think it's just uh, we know what's on the line. We know what's at stake, and we, we don't want to let our teammates down. And We're playing within our system as opposed to trying to play as an individual. We're, we're really coming together the last few games. And of course, anything can happen. There's still one half left to yeah. play. But what are you thinking right now in terms of tomorrow? Um, we're not thinking about tomorrow at all. We've uh, since our loss to Montreal, we've really coined a phrase: just next point. You've probably noticed we hold up one finger, and that's just uh, a reminder to forget what's happened, forget that last point, and just focus on the next point coming up. Okay. Is there anything you guys think you need to work to improve or tighten for in the next half? I think there's always things to improve, and I think that's the beauty of this game. I think our defense could get a little bit closer. I think we're they're throwing away a little bit, and we could get more Ds as opposed to letting them throw it away. And we've had a few turnovers in offense. I think we could have the timing on the continuation cut still get better. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for your time. You guys are looking really strong. It's fun to watch you right now. Hey, thank you. It's, it's fun to play in front of a crowd. All right, Evan, back to you. Megan, thank you. It's scary to think that they still could improve. The Rush with a 10-score lead at halftime here in the first semifinal of AUDL Championship Weekend in 2014, presented by CDW. When we come back, our halftime show will be joined by some of the competitors in the second semifinal. A couple of spiders will join us. We'll also check out the first half highlights and much, much more. Our ESP 
ESPN3 coverage of Championship Weekend here in the American Ultimate Disc League continues in just a moment. Why are you Employer of the Month? I hired an ice sculptor. What did you do? What did I do? I worked with CDW to increase efficiency, and I optimized our data center with Cisco UCS service with Intel Xeon processors. Oh, that is good. So can I be Employee of the Month? No. I missed my graduation to practice. I sleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. Welcome back to Toronto. The Rush leading the Empire 19 to 9 after one half of play. Welcome back to our broadcast location, and I am surrounded by spiders. I'm usually afraid of them, but these guys seem nice. Mark L. Bogan to my right, Michael Keyoy to my left. These guys will be in, in action tonight against the Madison Radicals at 7 o'clock. And Mike, let's start with you. Your first cross country road trip to play in the AUDL. What was the travel like? Travel was actually not bad. We uh, had a, a slight. Uh, layover in North Carolina, but we drove to LA, stayed at a buddy's place, and then flew out early, early in the morning on Thursday, and then did some sightseeing on Friday, which was a lot of fun. Mark and this other guy, Tyler Bacon, and I went to Niagara Falls, saw some sights. It was really fun. Sounds like a heck of a time. You guys have had an unbelievable season, and one of the big reasons the Spiders have been so successful is the influx of talent from Santa Barbara, mainly guys like you. Take me through the story of when the guys from San Jose first approached you to join San Jose Spiders? Uh, I believe Michael was first in contact with Andrew and um, talked to him first and he said that he was looking to, to find some good talent down south and he wanted to have a couple of a couple of strong players from many different teams. He didn't want to have one team take over the whole Spiders uh, team. And so we talked and we got a handful of guys to come up to tryouts and uh, we were able to grab four of us that we've been able to travel together and have a, a really good success. What was your relationship like before this season with the Revolver guys like Bo and Ashlyn and, and all those young San Francisco guys? Uh, I definitely played against a lot of them, with some of them at various tournaments and things like that. Um, they're all really great guys. Um, I've gotten to know them a lot better uh, recently over these last few months. Um, but it's uh, nice to have them on my team for once instead of having to guard them all the time. Before we get to tonight's game, last week in the quarterfinals, your fifth meeting of the year against San Francisco. You've had some great games against them. This one was not as close. Why? What, what happened with you guys last week? I think as the season has gone on, our offense has really started to click. And San Francisco was also missing a couple key players, but our defense as well. Um, a lot of the talk is about how we have all these all-star offensive players, but we have a lot of defenders that just do the right things at the right time. We get breaks and just continue on with the momentum. Plus, it helps that we have an awesome crowd. San Jose, they're fantastic ultimate uh, fans. Is it safe to say that when the season began, you expected to be here in Toronto this weekend? Uh, no, actually, I. it's a dream come true to even play professional ultimate. I. I would never have thought when I started to play that this would, I would be here talking to you, hanging out with Mark. Uh, you know, our owner, Andrew Zill, is fantastic. It's, it's just a, a huge blessing, and a, we feel very, very lucky um, to be here. Obviously, probably your toughest game yet this year tonight against this Madison team. What's it been like preparing to play the Radicals, a team that you've never seen before in person? 
Uh, I think that's that's the main thing you just said is we've gone all season playing the same teams over and over again, three, four, five times. Um, so this is something completely new. Uh, I think we've watched a little bit of tape, uh, tried to prepare as much as we can, um, but it's really going to be which team can uh, make modifications on the fly the best. Um, I know you guys have mentioned that, and I definitely agree. Um, I know the both coaches and captains are ready to see what the other team has and, and make changes when you need to, to figure out how to win the game. What are some of the keys that you guys have talked about and things that you need to do well to handle this Madison team and keep it close? Uh, I know the, the big talk is they have a, a great zone defense, and it uh, looks like the weather is holding up now, but we'll see how it does later on. That, that could definitely come into play. Um, so we've looked at uh, good ways to protect the disc and, and spread their field so that we can uh, have have success against that zone, which is what we've looked at for sure. And obviously the winner of that game plays the winner of this game. It looks like it's going to be Toronto. They're up by 10 at the half. I'm not asking you to, to look forward into how the Spiders were the men match up, but what are your thoughts about this Toronto Rush team and how they've looked in this first 24 minutes? They look really good, and they move the disc very well. They don't make a lot of mistakes. I think it helps that they're used to this field, used to the atmosphere, but I got to give them a lot of credit. They, they are a fantastic team, and if we do uh, – make it to the finals, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know it'll be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Michael Keoy, Marco Belgan, best of luck to you guys. You. It's been a great watching you play all year. Thanks for joining us here at the half. Right, thanks. Ten point lead for the Toronto Rush. We're back with more from Toronto in just a moment. Money fight! They get to throw money around. We have to watch every cent. At least IT is being responsible. We got CDW to upgrade the whole company to the latest HP printers. Increased productivity and saved us a fortune. Charles, grab a bucket and join in. Charles, you don't bring pennies to a money fight. Nineteen nine, the halftime score, Toronto leads New York. And down in the crowd somewhere, Megan Tormey is getting set to talk to somebody. Megan, where are you? Hey, Evan, I am joined by my favorite interviewee of all time, Stephen Armitage's dad, Joe Armitage. Joe, thank you for talking with me again. It's my pleasure, as always. So first, I have to ask you, how excited are you to have Toronto hosting the championship weekend? Oh, very excited. This is probably the best thing that could have happened to us. Uh, it's just wonderful. It's a beautiful city. And as was Chicago last year, it was a great place, too. I think Toronto has a lot to offer, and I hope we're showing everybody a good time. Well, you certainly are so far. Uh, you mentioning that you went to the championship weekend last year when it was in Chicago. You're clearly a super fan of the Rush. How many games have you been to? I've, ne I've only missed one Rush uh, home game, but I made up for that. I went to a road game in Montreal. That's absolutely incredible, especially when uh, you talk about where you're from. Give us your hometown and how far away that is from here. Well, I'm from Peterborough, Ontario, and that's about an hour and a half, two hours, depending upon traffic. and. We uh, quite often stay at our cottage, which is north of that, so add another hour and a half onto that. Oh, man, that is dedication. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the fan experience here in the crowd. Well, the, it, the, the fans, the crowd, they're fabulous. You saw it during the, uh, the halftime break there with uh, throwing the discs to the contestants on the field. Everybody stayed in the stands to watch it, and uh, that's exciting. And you can tell by the roars every time, uh, you know, there's a defensive uh, play, they, they applaud it. If there's an offensive play, they applaud it no matter what team. So I think they're very good fans, and it's fun to watch. It really is. My last question, and it's very important because you have never been wrong. What's going to happen in the second half? Well, you're right. I never have been wrong with one of your interview questions, so I'm going to predict a Toronto win today. And uh, I, But I must say that uh, New York has played fabulously. They've, they've really, really put on a show for us, so uh, good to them. But I think Toronto's going to be victorious. And would you be so bold as to give your prediction tomorrow if the Toronto Rush win today? Well, I think Toronto will win tomorrow as well. I do. I feel it in my bones that it's our home field, and we're going to do it. All right. If Joe says it's true, then it must be true. Joe, thank you so much for talking to me. I always appreciate it. Well, thank you, Megan. My pleasure. All right, Evan, back to you. Megan, thanks so much. As we bring it back to the booth, our parade of interviews will continue. Again, the halftime score, Toronto leading New York 19-9. And I'm joined by Andrew Brown of the Madison Radicals, one of the primary handlers. you got a pretty big game tonight. What are your thoughts heading into this evening? 
Um, well, it's a tremendous opportunity for us. I mean, uh, coming up short in the national championship game or the AUDL championship la last year, uh, you know, left a bitter taste in our mouth. Felt like it was a game that we could win, so we're excited to be back here and, and give it another shot. And I think we can, we can be back in that finals game and have another crack at, you know, well, at least right now it's looking like Toronto. And before you can get to Toronto, I know you guys have been looking to facing the San Jose team. What has the preparation been like in studying this team that you've never seen before in person? Right. I mean, it's it's a it's a difficult task because, yeah, like you said, it's not a team that we've seen before. They're not in our conference. So really all we have to rely on is video. Fortunately, there is a fair amount of video out there to watch. So uh, our team has been spending a lot of time check, checking out the, uh, the, the spiders and, and how they do things. Uh, in particular, our D-line has been watching a lot of, a lot of film. And, uh, you know, we're going to set up our game plan according to, uh, to Tim DeBow's, our, coach plan, our coach's plan. You guys took care of Indianapolis last week, a close game at the half, pulled away in the second half. You did not have Pat Trywise last week. Right. He's back today. How does that impact your offense? Well, it's great. I mean, he's one of our sort of alpha cutters out there, one of our, one of our primary looks. He's a tremendously athletic guy, tall guy, fast, uh, does everything well. Uh, he, he hurt himself at a, at a club tournament a couple weeks ago, got some stitches in his knee. So fortunately, it wasn't a, a real bad knee, knee injury, just a cut, and he's got, got the stitches out. He'll be back out there for us, so it'll be a, a, a Great advantage to have him back back out there with the O-line. And having you here in the booth, I have to ask, I'm sure we have a lot of young Ultimate fans watching. You're one of the finest throwers in, in the game today. What's the key to you throwing the disc as accurately and precisely as you do? What advice would you give to a young player on how to become a better thrower? Honestly, practice, practice, practice. I mean, when I first sort of fell in love with Ultimate, I fell hard, and I spent a lot of time throwing with my best friend, Keenan. In, in lighted parking lots at night. Instead of you know going out, hanging out with friends, he and I would go find a lighted parking lot of like a supermarket or a mall or something, and we'd throw for a couple hours. So it's, it's all about practice. It's all about getting reps, throwing as much as you possibly can. That, that would be my advice. And when you're in a parking lot, you gotta catch it because the most painful sound in the world, as we all Ultimate players know, is the disc hitting the pavement. Exactly. Last thing we'll ask you, what are the keys to the Radicals taking care of business tonight and getting back to the finals? Um, I think we have to sort of limit some of their stars as best we can. Obviously, they have some of the top-end players, not just in the AUDL, but in the, the whole of the game and the world even. So limiting them to, you know, not outstanding games, but, you know, you, you can't take players like that completely out of a game. Uh, our offense is going to have to play consistently. I mean, we sort of expect to probably have to play a bit more than we have uh, during our, our regular season. And... Yeah, converting on, on, on uh, defensive break opportunities. When our D-line is able to take the disc away from, from uh, San Jose, we have to be patient and move the disc into the end zone. Uh, I mean, the, the conditions look like they may be a little bit windy. They looks, look like, looks like it is in this first game. But, uh, yeah, we just we got to take care of business. Good luck to you and the Radicals. I know we're looking forward to it. I know the world is looking forward to it as well. <laughs> Best of luck. Stay healthy out there. Have fun. Thanks a lot, Evan. That's Andrew Brown and the Madison Radicals. 19-9 Toronto leads at halftime here at Varsity Stadium. We'll take a look at the first half highlights when we come back in a moment. I missed my graduation. To practice. I sleep so we could drill. I missed the anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. First half highlights presented by CDW. Even the tough plays made it look easy as Yearwood's hammer to the end zone, connecting with Steve Armitage. That was at the outset. And really, this is going to be a flood of Toronto Rush highlights. New York doing all it can, but even the greatest hustle couldn't catch up to Cameron Harris. And as Megan Tormey rejoins us, I mean, what can you say about this Toronto performance? You could critique New York, but I think this is more about praising Toronto, don't you? I absolutely agree. Anything they needed to work on, anything they needed to tighten up over the season has just magically come together in the last, I have to assume, two, day, uh, two games. I have to assume their game against the D.C. Breeze last week looked this crisp this clean uh, we're seeing them at their peak performance you watch there they're prepared to grab any d they're prepared to get any long shot their throws are looking crisp and clean and everyone seems to be working well together that was at the very end of the first quarter and that gave new york some hope that made it nine 
to five. And then this made it nine to six. And then Toronto just rediscovered its mojo. You're right, offensively, New York had a couple of moments of brilliance where despite the pressure from the rush, they managed to work together, working it towards the end zone. But then I have to say this, this play by Gord Harrison here really seems to be indicative. They were on top of the empire just every step of the way. Being down on the field, did you get any sense of what the mentality of the New York empire was being down there? Sort of, how was their body language? They didn't seem as fired up as I'm used to seeing them on the sideline. Their motto the entire year, their mantra has been the faceless mob. We are the faceless mob. And when they come out with that, that understanding, you really get the sense that they don't think anyone has the right to assume a win over them. But that energy has been muted this game. uncharacteristic drops by some of their stars that was Matt Bode Justin Allen made that great catch but then he immediately threw it over uh, threw it away after he rose yeah they just see how they just seem to uh, not be catching any breaks great bid by Ivers but Harris who chatted with Megan a few minutes ago Well, New York, a chance to make some history down by 10 at the half. It would be certainly a historic comeback. You know, we saw the first few minutes of this game, there were points every 20 seconds or so. So there's certainly a lot of time to score a lot of points. Right, and, and those points showed us that when they're calm and collected, the Empire can score quickly. It's not outside of the realm of their capacity. Great look at the CN Tower. That's right next door to the Rogers Center, home of the Toronto Blue Jays, just down the street from the Air Canada Center, home of the Toronto Raptors. The Blue Jays have had a nice season. The Raptors made the playoffs this spring, but arguably the most successful pro team here in Toronto is the rush and they received to start the second half McKnight quickly to Yearwood this is Loiseau defended by Ryan uh, making Mike Drost and he's shaken up after he got underneath great run through D I'm not exactly sure what happened Certainly a scary moment as Varsity Stadium goes silent. It was an unbelievably explosive athletic maneuver to get this D around Armitage. And it's hard to tell. Is it that right leg that sort of got snapped back? Or his knee. This is twin brother Ryan. Tom Gibbons on the left, the head coach of the Empire. Fifteen seconds into the third quarter, and a scary stoppage. We're hoping Mike Drost is okay. The Empire will have the disc. They trail by 10 early in the second half, and we'll be back in just a moment here to Toronto. Who are these clowns? Our new hires. Feels like we're just hiring people off the street. We are. We're growing so fast. We need manpower. At least CDW pre-configured these two-on-one devices with Intel inside for us. There's a tablet when you want it and a laptop when you need it. Just take it already. Back to live action, and after the first throw, after Drost left the field, New York took a deep shot for Allen. It was out of his reach, so Toronto recollects, and Yearwood sending one deep. 
50-50, and it's Childers who wins the battle. You have to hope that signaling, signaling a little more crispness from the Empire, just a little more collectiveness. I joked with Tom Givens before the game that oftentimes his, his halftime speeches have been a game changer. I always ask him, you know, what, how do you decide what you're going to say? He said he thinks he just goes into a, a trance whenever he's coaching. Not exactly sure what he says until someone relays it for him afterwards. Wow. It hasn't been Justin Allen's day so far. Lack of concentration there. A lengthy first point to begin the second half ends with a deep shot to Mark Lloyd. Let's talk for a second about Mark Lloyd. And, you know, off the field, he has put this team together. He's the general manager. His father and his uncle have both helped to support this league in ways that we'll never be able to thank them enough for. And yet, I'm not sure he gets credit enough for being one of the most dominant players in the sport. You know, compared to a Bo Kittredge or a Brody Smith or a Goose Helton, he doesn't look as physically intimidating. But I would never bet against Mark Lloyd in any one-on-one -on -one battle against any of those guys. I absolutely agree. and. Having gotten to know him through the AUDL, I have to say he's an incredibly humble and gracious individual. So I think a lot of times whenever he gets credit, he deflects it to his teammates saying they help make him who he is. But you watch him, the plays that he's able to generate, that's a lot of individual talent as well. New York trailing by 11. Incomplete, out of the reach of the diving cats. Well, as this game progresses, the wind is perhaps gaining a little steam and the sun is disappearing. There were a decent chance of storms today. If they arrive late in this game or for the second semifinal, how do you feel that impacts a Radical Spiders matchup? Honestly, I think it's gonna work to the Radicals benefit if conditions are a little less than favorable. Whenever you can make things more challenging for the offense, especially an offense like the San Jose Spiders have, that's going to open up many more opportunities for you. Couple that with the zone that the Radicals like to put on. I think that would be quite a challenge for the Spiders. Noah Saul unable to come up with a deep shot. Toronto looking to go full field. Trevor Henry softly for Lindquist. Scuber forward. Harrison's deep shot into the hands of Jonathan Martin. And he's in the end zone for Toronto. Just barely, too. I mean, that was 80 yards in, what, five, six throws? The Empire looked like they were putting on a little more pressure, just a little more pressure on the handlers. Rush were having to take one or two looks before they let those throws go off. All the same, you can't say that didn't look easy for them. Big D from Mike Jones. He's got a couple inches on Noah Saul. Nice shot by our camera crew. And then just working it downfield here. A nice calm offense triggered by Henry and Lindquist. 
Henry, Linquist, and Martin are just having fantastic game, a, a fantastic game today. This is Sam Taylor underneath to Ryan Drost. Played collegiately at Amherst. Now to the fringe of the end zone, back to Taylor and for Drost for the score. The Empire cracks double digits. Doesn't happen until under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. So that's a little more of what we were seeing at the beginning of the game from the Empire. They were kind of waiting until they had opportunities and then working with those opportunities. Smarter decisions, making sure there wasn't a rush in the way of the throw, which seems to have been plaguing them today. Lieberman to pull. Reyna up for McKnight. Out there with Lloyd, Harris, Yearwood, Loazo, and Armitage. But you name all the players in this offensive line for Toronto. Is there any weakness you can try to take advantage of if you're the defense? I'm not sure there is. And certainly not the way they're playing today. You know, we've talked about how important pole plays are for the Toronto Rush, how often they like to get the disc and then run a certain series of throws. Seems to be their Achilles heel for a while. But they've kind of adjusted to flowing without necessarily calling which shots they're going to try to take, which is really showing in this game. Somebody's poached in a red jersey. Loazo back for Yearwood. Adrian Yearwood works here in the Toronto area. He owns his own acting company. Harris to Lloyd. In no particular hurry, Harris not in the end zone yet. High release, push pass. That was pretty. <laughs> That was, that was a good throw. You know, that entire point, if you looked at where the stack was set up, they were right down the middle. It was kind of one of those ideal playbook designs. The rush were so disciplined at each person taking their turn for the cut, which is why we didn't see any clogging, why the handlers never look flustered or rushed or concerned. I have to say it was a little bit surprising that they ended such a disciplined place point with a high release push pass. <laughs> Not judging, just saying. Cameron Harris has the size. Why not? <laughs> Marin on the mark here for Toronto. Good quick pivot. Bode keeps possession alive. 
Martin and Bode have really been battling all game. Yeah, that matchup would have been Powell if he wasn't suffering from a hamstring injury right now. I think Martin has been doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, the rush are without Jeff Bomber Powell for this game. Now he was on the field, cleaned it up, throwing beforehand. It'll be interesting to see, do they try to send him out there tomorrow? And they have a lot of players without him, but he's certainly a dynamic physical specimen. Deep shot, over the top, hammer to Lindquist. Harrison the assist and the rush lead by 13. Man, you look at the, all the different ways in which the rush are scoring right now. They have just about every throw in the book. That's the second point this quarter that they have thrown across the entire stack to get to the opposite corner of the end zone. When you have that capability, when you have those possibilities, that's impossible to guard. Especially with a field being 50 yards exactly wide instead right. of 40 yards wide. Throws like that are why, you know, a possible Toronto versus San Jose final is just so intriguing as a spectator because I'm not sure either team is going to be able to stop the other. No, you are, you are on point. Throws like that, you can only hope to contain certain areas of the field. You certainly can't take everything away. Allen looking for Ryan Drost in the end zone. Ryan Drost, 90 minutes younger than his <laughs> twin brother, Mike Drost, who we hope is all right. Drost ran track for the varsity team at Amherst. Started playing ultimate there as well. Justin Allen, a, a high school tennis player, and then he started his ultimate team in the Raleigh area in high school, Lee Ford High School. Now, if you're a young player out there and you think I can never be as good as any of these guys, I could never play in an AUDL semifinal. As a freshman at Appalachian State, as the Empire get called for offsides, Justin Allen went to sectionals and lost every single game he played. As the best player on the team, and now is one of the top players in the league, he's here on one of the, the, the largest stages for ultimate. And the offside gives it to Toronto. Harris to McKnight, beautifully done. That started with McKnight's fantastic upline cut. He shook his defender with a double move, and then one flip to the end zone, and the rush are pouring it on here in Toronto. To go back to the point you were making about Allen, I really think that is a great one. When you consider all he has done to, to forge paths in of ultimate communities where he lives, you have to assume that so much of what he can do is self-taught. And that does go to show you don't necessarily have to be in an area where Ultimate is thriving to be a great player. Two-time AUDL MVP, Goose Helton with Chicago. And before that Indy, he was not a, a well-known college Ultimate player and became one of the top guys, the top guy in the AUDL the past two years. The list goes on and on. For every guy that you know, is playing on the U19, U23 world teams, there are a lot of guys who are continuing to work to battle to become the best. There's a defensive breakdown for the rush here. If they were only up by three instead of up by 13, that would look a lot worse. It's now 24 to 12. Yeah, credit goes to Ryan Drost, uh, Isaiah Bryant, and Matt Bode on that point. Bode saw the, the opportunity that was opening up. 
worked with Bryant to get to a Dross who is who's peeling away and wide open. Bode to Bryant and then one more for Ryan Drost. So many of the top players in the world will be descending on Lecco Italy in the week ahead for the World Club Championships of 2014. USA men's teams like Denver's Johnny Bravo, San Francisco's Revolver, Boston Ironside, Seattle Sockeye, women's teams like Seattle Riot, San Francisco Fury, Washington DC Scandal, Austin Texas Showdown, some of the great mixed teams as well. And of course, before Worlds happen, the U19 championships, the finals were played earlier today in the women's final Team USA won handily 17 to nine in the U19 boys championship game. It was USA and Canada, and we were chatting with the Toronto Rush head coaches before the game. They were in a good mood because the Canadian team defeated the USA team 17 to 16 as Toronto finds the end zone again. Carl Loisseau brings the rush to 25 on the afternoon. That game was 16 all, double universe point, double gold medal point. And a guy who plays in the AUDL had the winning score, which is unbelievable. Darren Wu of the Vancouver Riptide over the top for the gold medal clinching score. That kid, if he stays healthy, has potential to be one of the greatest ultimate players of all time. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's got a long way to go, but. No doubt a very exciting moment for him, but he is definitely a standout star on the Vancouver Riptide. You had the opportunity to see them live when they played the Spiders. I watched from home. That was a very exciting game, and, and Wu made quite an impact in that game. That was the game of the season, as far as I was concerned. Closing in in the final minutes in this third quarter, the rush up by 13. The, the, the big question is who's going to be the MVP of this game for the Toronto rush? Because you know, so many different guys have been key in pulling away by this margin. Might as well just close your eyes and point, Evan. Well, we think Toronto is probably going to win this game. Who do you think is going to win? The AUDL Championship and why. Let us know at Evan Lepler at Meagles triple zero with the hashtag AUDL Final Four. And if you wouldn't mind letting us know who's the MVP of this game. <laughs> Elliot Bemis into the end zone again for the Empire. If you had to pick an MVP of this game right now for the Toronto Rush, who do you think has been the most influential Toronto player? That is a very tough question. Well, that's why um, we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm going to have to say Martin. I think that he has been um, pretty impactful on D. Kind of stopping Bode from being more impactful and then turn it around on oh he's been a great receiver downfield it's been chilly with the disc I think that he's he's made quite quite an impact this game what about you Evan I think Martin's a good choice anytime Lloyd is on the field he's a game changer leading his team in plus minus for the season, but Justin Allen just hand blocked Mark Lloyd. New York team number one, Justin Allen. Oh boy. Oh, Katz comes down with it. Very risky throw. Was there contact from behind? Yes. So Katz will gain 10 yards and keep the disc. Open side cut to Sam Taylor. 
Billy Katz really has been kind of an anchor for the Empire offense this game. If anyone seems to be trying to hold it down, hold it together, it's definitely been him. Very interestingly, last year he was not slated to play on the Empire, or at least not get a lot of uh, playing time when Tom Gibbons took over as head coach. He definitely saw something in Billy Katz, put him at the forefront of the Empire offense. That 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 move has definitely been working out for the for the Empire. It was 25-14. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter. It has cooled off. The wind has shifted a little bit, more of a cross breeze right now than a true upwind, downwind. And you wonder if weather's on the way. I've seen both teams slipping on this turf a little bit. Certainly Toronto's used to playing on this surface. These two teams squared off in the semi in Chicago last year. Toronto winning that one as well. Some contact near the disc, but no call. And the Empire will have it. We already lost Mike Dross, and now Ryan shaking up. Looks like he hit his head on the turf. Quite simply, this just not hasn't gone according to plan for the Empire. Contact downfield, Toronto will center the disc. Jones for Vasiliev, laying out in the end zone. Intelligent put by Jones. You saw how closely Vasiliev was marked. Put it well out of the reach of Childers. Well, last year in the semifinals, Toronto beat New York 25-18. Toronto has already surpassed that 25 goal margin total. And we still have 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. A drone shot of the pull. I like the drones, but they also make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> How so? You know, it's never out of the reach of a hammer. The sky cam in college football is great until it lands on the field in the middle of a play. I guess that was a risk they were willing to take. You notice it is always intelligently flown just out of the way of the play. That's the end of three here at Varsity Stadium. The home team is looking strong here in Toronto. The Rush winning that third quarter. It was
was 19-9 at the half. And the rush take that quarter. Seven to five. We're back with a fourth quarter of action here in the first AUDL semifinal after this. It's the company that wins at everything. A company so successful, it has basketball superstar Charles Barkley hanging out. Actually, I work in IT. A company so successful, it has Sir Charles sitting in the lap of luxury. While CDW configures the new thinner, lighter HP Elite Book with the Intel Core i5 processors for him. It's so true. Tom Gibbons leading the New York Empire. 12 more minutes on the clock. A 12-point deficit for New York to overcome. As we jump into these third quarter highlights, it was a much closer quarter, the closest of the game so far. Toronto still won it 7-5. Our highlights presented by CDW. And really, that's the best you could hope for when the score is at the deficit that it is. They really dug themselves into a hole the first half. So to come out with plays like that, it's like I said, kind of the best you could hope for and a testament to them taking the time during halftime to reel it back together. Tremendous defensive play by Mike Jones. Harris wasn't in on the jump, but it just took one more throw, and hey, how about a push pass? <laughs> Final quarter of action here in the first semifinal. The winner of this game will take on the winner between San Jose and Madison. That game's scheduled for 7 o'clock. Martin skied by Bode, who calls timeout 13 seconds into the quarter. Officially 15 seconds in. The Empire need to make up one point per minute. And this is a good start. Yeah, great read, great sky by Matt Bode here. He really got up. Yeah. Bode shows off the hops. The Empire trying to make this interesting. As they call a timeout, we will take it as well. Don't worry, I'll call you when I get there. Mom's not going to believe it. Send her a picture. Are you seeing this? Wow. New York creates a straight stack in the end zone. Only one dump. Bode versus Martin, closest to the disc in the end zone. Bode slips making his move. Back to the handler, Noah Saul. Not an easy put from Isaac, but executed really well. A brotherly put here from Isaac Saul to his older brother, Noah. I asked Tom how it was integrating Isaac into the, into the offense of the Empire this late in the season. He said, you know, with the experience that he's had playing with, with Noah, given his talent as a handler, really hasn't been anything but a pro. Isaac, of course, won two national championships with Pittsburgh. New York Bulls number 24, Noah Saul. Assisted by number 51, Isaac. 
Ryan Drost is back on the field for the Empire. That's good news. Loasso for Reyna. It is amazing how when the stall count rises, the rush always finds somebody open. They seem hyper aware of what the stall count is too. So, so rarely do we see stalls from the rush. But you're absolutely right. There's always someone there to be that last ditch bailout to keep that disc moving. Allen trying to stay with Lloyd at the back of the end zone. A lot of cutting underneath and now looking for Lloyd on the break side. From Yearwood. It's the second connection in the back of the end zone we've seen from Yearwood and Lloyd talking earlier about how there always seems to be someone there to get the dump. There's always someone there to bail out the handlers. The chemistry of this team cannot be overlooked as well. The fact that Yearwood and Lloyd have played together so many different times in different opportunities really goes to show, or, or really can be seen in points like that. Yearwood just directed Lloyd very easily. Lloyd knew exactly where he wanted to put it. Isaiah Masik, Pell, uh, Masik Kelly to pull. Watanabe, Vasiliev, Marin, Jones, Lindquist. All defending for the rush. Kept alive by Bryant. And now Bode being chased by Ricky Zito. Contact was the call. Integrity call invoked, and it will be Toronto's disc. That was Taylor Brooks with the integrity call, saying, no, Jones did not. There was no contact on that deep. And a, and a good indication that even on the biggest stage, yes, this is, met, who knows if this was 17 to 15, would they have taken that call back? You can only wonder. But for the most part, I think everybody's been really pleased with the overall spirit from every team in the AUDL. By the way, Mike Drost is standing up on the sidelines in his Empire jersey, but we haven't seen him since he was shaken up in the third quarter. Jones. <laughs> Toronto adding to its lead. Ricky Zito. Zito, another youngster, U23 product out of York University. Been playing ultimate since he was just a boy. Well, the fans here in Toronto certainly have enjoyed this one. Exclaiming shouts, feel the rush. I imagine tomorrow the rush dashes will be out in full force. <laughs> I would have to think they'll, they'll be a little more necessary tomorrow. Intercepted by Mostagimi. Oh, 
center to Pinto and a traveling call on the receiver. Receiver travel, it will stay Toronto's disc, but a few yards back. First few raindrops beginning to fall here in Toronto as the swing sails past Martin, the intended target. An impossible hammer. Not a terrible punt, but certainly the Empire weren't in position of wanting to punt. Yeah, not the best decision. The only good thing that it did was it got the disc well off of the rush end zone line, giving Empire at least a chance to get that D back a little closer to their end zone. But as we've seen from the rush so many times, it doesn't take many throws for them to work it down. Kind of an uncharacteristic drop from Trevor Henry. It's amazing, a few umbrellas have popped up, but it's also gotten brighter with more sunshine. Seven thirty remaining here in this fourth quarter. Most of gaming for Vasiliev. Not enough. That was down. Disc and a delay of game called on Toronto to grant that 10 yards, which they had on the throw anyway. Noah Saul underneath to Elliot Bemis. Allen lets one rip for Bemis. Incomplete. a few unfortunate mistakes from New York have, be, have been costing them, them this point. But that was the kind of play I was really expecting when we came into this game at the beginning of the day. Watching them in their game against the Wildfire, we heard from Bodie Smith himself that the Empire were really ruthless once they got the D. This game, however, not so much. Timeout called down on the field with 6.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Rush looking like they're on their way to the championship game again. This time it would be at home. Stay with us here on ESPN3. I missed my graduation to practice. I sleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. Valentine's Day. I missed some point play. I even missed my parents' anniversary. I missed some luck. Don't forget the second semifinal coming up in just under two hours from here at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. It'll be interesting to see who the crowd gets behind as two visiting teams play what is a neutral side game, San Jose and Madison, both with great fan bases at their home stadiums, but long journeys for both of those teams. Last year, Toronto beat Madison in the finals by two. I think Madison has been thirsting for a rematch with Toronto, but they've also been really eager to play San Jose and prove what they can do. And in good news, the, the rain has lightened up, the sun shining, and Mark Lloyd's going deep. And Thompson McKnight just fired a beautiful 70-yard flick. The rush are rolling. They sure are. That was an absolutely beautiful put. 
And then, of course, it's always nice when your teammates are in hot pursuit of the hawk you're chasing so that you have options immediately available as soon as you catch that disc. Why is following the play so important? Well, first of all, if Lloyd had misread or misplayed that disc, then automatically there's at least a second chance for someone to get it. Cam Harris with the big flick rather than McKnight, who set up the big flick. But then most importantly, Lloyd needs only establish a pivot foot. And then right there, Isaiah Masichelli is, is ready for the catch before the umpire is able to put on a tight D, or a tight mark, excuse me. The rush continuing to add to their lead. Winninger takes a shot. He wants Bryant too much. And Brian was not willing to let that go without a fight, though. He chased it all the way to the very back of that line, nearly running into the scissor lift as a result. Five minutes remaining. Another huge flick. Harrison in pursuit of this one. Up line for Watanabe. Watanabe is the oldest player on the rush. He is, I believe, 40 years old. 41. 41, but what's very interesting about him is he didn't start playing ultimate until he was 30. All right, Vince, Takes great care of his body. Ford Harrison. I mean, he's only 26, so he's got a big future ahead of him. I guess Harrison gets credit for the hockey assist there. Watanabe hauls in the score, and it's 30 to 15. Ryan Drost over the top, absorbing the contact. The Drost brothers have just taken a beating here today. Given up the body for these plays for sure. No assault to nobody. Wow. He's never found a rhythm. <laughs> this is Pinto ahead for Martin. Right on the money. Bradford to Mostagimi. The crowd is calling for the hammer at this point. Over the top, Mostagimi hangs on, and a pick call downfield. Well, you have a lot of time to preview tomorrow night's game. Tomorrow afternoon's game, I should say, 1 o'clock. 
your quick thoughts on how Toronto matches up differently versus San Jose than it does perhaps against Madison? I think that the radical zone would give the Toronto Rush quite a bit of trouble. Here's Bode in the end zone, a nice shot, and New York now with 16. We've seen a lot of great offensive flow from the rush today. We've seen it really all season. I don't think, however, that the Empire has put on their signature D and bothered the rush offense too much. However, no one in the AUDL has a zone quite like Madison. And unless you've played against it at least once before, it's pretty, it's pretty challenging. And I know that the rush did get an opportunity to play against the Radical Zone last year in the, uh, in the championship weekend. However, they've changed some things up. It's a little bit different. Plus, that was a full year ago. When we were talking earlier about the San Jose Spiders, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's going to be an awful lot of amazing offense from both teams if it turns out that it's a rush spider matchup. Biggest difference between the radical zone last year and this year is a guy named Peter Graffy, who's now at the back of that zone and led the league in D's. Raina to Harris, who's had a really solid game. Lloyd to Lindquist. Two of the great players in Canada. Here's Yearwood, another guy who's represented his country on the ultimate field. And a stall was called on Yearwood. The Toronto Rush are going to head back to the championship game to face either San Jose or Madison. The fans still cheering for Hammer instead of Flick Huck looking for Mark Lloyd. That's usually always a good decision. <laughs> In a game where the flow offensively has been just great for the rush, I still feel Lloyd has been doing an amazing job stretching the field even further. Giving the rush more opportunities towards the back of the end zone. His defender gave up, but the way he created separation before his defender gave up is what was notable there. Effortless strides. Yep, he had a lot of space to work with on that throw. So the rush back up by 15 here at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. It was interesting chatting with the guys about what happened to the game against Montreal. And we had seen the Royale lose to D.C. the week before, and you know, they basically said it, it would make our season to go to Toronto and end their perfect streak. They did. Evan Phillips said you know, there was maybe a solid 10 minutes of demoralization. They were demoralized for about 10 minutes, and then you know, they moved on, and they said it was a good shot in the gut. Ultimate crowds are known for heckling Evan, <laughs> but I, I do think it's hilarious that the Rush crowd is in a championship weekend heckling for a hammer. Here's Vasiliev, and he's fouled. 
for all intents and purposes, this one is over. As the rush, the top seed in the East fending off New York. Toronto beat New York by two back in April. And then in June, they beat them by three. This was unlike either of those games. A 15-point route. They led by four at the end of one. They led by 10 at the break. They led by 12 at the end of three. And the Rush win it by 15 over the New York Empire. Yeah, I certainly don't know if this spread was the outcome any of us were expecting. We talked so much about how the New York, how the Empire were getting better throughout the season. Of course, it's equally possible, probable, and true that the Rush were getting that much better as well. So the Rush are on to the title game here in 2014, their second straight trip into the final pair. It'll be either Toronto versus San Jose or a rematch of last year, Toronto against Madison. The Rush won every quarter, winning the final quarter five to two. The scoring cooled off late. The wind picked up. Toronto wasn't as urgent offensively. But they appreciate their hometown fans, and the New York team does as well. Yeah, the fans really were great this game, as Joe Armitage point, pointed out. The crowd really was clapping for both sides, or for both teams. Obviously, the cheers were more rancorous when their rush scored but they still gave the Empire their credit as well. Getting ready for this semifinal game MVP presentation down on the field. The Rush will get to play one more game on this pitch tomorrow. Let's send it down to the field. Jonathan Martin named the MVP of this semifinal as the Rush win it 31 to 16 over the Empire. Toronto back in the championship game and this time they will get a chance to win it on their home turf in front of their home fans. A lot of players you could have chosen from Toronto. Mark Lloyd or Cam Harris or really anybody but the Rush a great team win. They take it by 15 and Megan, I think we've been talking. This is not what we expected. We expected a tight game. We thought New York had a reasonable chance, but Toronto erased all doubt early. Especially in the second quarter, we saw them pull away by an almost unclosable margin. And it was because they looked so good. Their chemistry was unparalleled. It was really hard to stop their defense and their offense. Toronto wins it 31 to 16. They'll take on the winner of the second semifinal between San Jose and Madison. The opening pull of that one just after seven o'clock. 
We'll be back with you then for the second semi. The Radicals and the Spiders meeting for the first time ever. Perhaps the most anticipated game of the year. I know I can't wait. We have just a couple, uh, less than two hours to wait for that. But for now, on behalf of our entire Fulcrum Media Group team, and for my broadcast partner, Megan Tormey, I'm Evan Lepler saying so long from Varsity Stadium in Toronto, where the rush were just too good for the Empire today. The final once more, 31 to 16. And that'll do it for our coverage of the first semifinal, the second semi. Coming your way soon on ESPN3. We'll talk to you then.